Today we celebrate the festival of Corpus Christi, or the commemoration of the Holy Communion. It is that day, uh, the Thursday after Trinity Sunday, where we focus on the institution of the Lord's Supper, uh, and in particular on the meaning and the sacrament of the Holy Communion. So I thought let me start uh, with the... Uh, um, with the collect set for today. So if you would pray with me. God of grace and glory, in the Paschal mystery, you established the new covenant of reconciliation and grafted us into the body of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Empower us with his love and make us one as he prayed that we should be one. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So instead of preaching a sermon about the communion, I thought I would give, in a sense, a little talk or a little lecture about our understanding of the Holy Communion within our parish at St. Stephen's. The understandings of the Holy Communion, uh, or the Eucharist or Mass, is diverse across different churches. And even within the Anglican community, there is a tremendous amount of diversity in our understanding and our practices regarding the Holy Communion. Indeed, even within our own diocese and just within our neighborhood, uh, one Anglican church to the next Anglican church may have different ways of making sense of and practicing the Eucharist. There is no one Anglican way, despite what some clergy and Anglicans will say, or oh, this is Anglican or this is not Anglican, that's really not true. Within the Anglican Communion, there is and there always has been uh, a wide range of views on things like the Holy Communion. And if we really want to simplify, we could say that the church sort of ranges from low church to high church, from evangelical, reformed uh, churches through to the Anglo-Catholic and the Oxford tradition a very high church, almost more Catholic than the Catholics, some would say. Our parish, St. Stephen's and Littleton, it could probably be categorized as a broad or mid-church, in the sense that we fall somewhere between low and high. We're, we're not particularly low, uh, but we're also not particularly high. We're somewhere in the middle. And so for us, for example, the Holy Communion is more than just a collective meal where we sit around and break bread and share wine. It's more, it's more than that. Um, but it's also less than uh, the actual body and blood of Christ. We don't believe we're actually consuming flesh and blood when we celebrate the communion. So that midpoint, somewhere in between those two extremes, is, involves a belief that something truly happens to the bread and wine during the communion service. What we receive when we put out our hands is more than just wafer and wine. Something happens in those elements. We believe that Christ is truly, really present in the bread and the wine. What we avoid trying to do is to define and specify what exactly it has changed and how it has actually changed. And this is part of the long tradition of the Anglican Church. We recognize a change, but we avoid trying to name it and define it and explain it. In a sense, we sit with the mystery that something has happened that we don't fully understand. But at root, in our practices at St. Stephen's, there is a belief that Christ is really present in the elements, in the bread and the wine, in some or other way. And we can see this in our practices. When we consecrate the bread and wine, we do so with great reverence. Uh, we genuflect, we bow, we lift up the elements as we consecrate them, we bring them down, we mark them with the sign of the cross. And we do all of this because we recognize something is happening. There's something deeply spiritual and mysterious happening during the great thanksgiving prayer 
that transforms bread and wine into something more. Similarly, when you come up to receive the Holy Communion, you do so with open hands. And uh, while we're on this point, let's just talk a little bit about how to receive. The idea is that you have one hand on top of the other, whether it's left on right or right on left is kind of what's comfortable to you. What we try not to do is to have our hands next to each other like this, because when I put the wafer into your hand, it's going to go into the middle and could easily fall out, or I've got to try and find a way to put it into the palm. So hand on top of hand. What we also should not be doing is coming up with the little claw fingers like this to receive the wafer in our fingers. Again, we have our hands open. Why, Why open hands? <clears throat> because it is a sign that we are receiving the communion passively. There's nothing that we can do to receive it. We don't take it. We just receive it in this open-handed, passive kind of way. It shows how we are entirely dependent on God for the receipt of the communion. At the end of the communion, once everybody is received, if there's leftover bread and wine, we don't discard it. In some churches, you can drink the wine at, at lunch. You can use the bread to make croutons for your salad. But in our church, we don't do that. We don't throw it away and we don't use it for other reasons because we believe that this bread and wine is now more than just bread and wine. We believe it is, in fact, a sacrament. And so whatever is left will either be consumed there and then, uh, which is what the old <clears throat> Anglican prayer book the old Book of Common Prayer from 1662 says we should do. We should reverently consume everything at the table, and we do that presently with the wine. At St. Stephen's, we also usually set aside a small amount of wafers uh, of, this, of the uh, bread and, and put it into the armory, which is that safe that you'll see on the left-hand side of the sanctuary. It sits in the wall with a little veil across it. And we at St. Stephen's reserve a very small amount, usually five to 10, at most maybe 15 or 20 wafers. And the only reason that we keep these leftover wafers is for the, if we need to do a home visit or a hospital visit, then we have sacrament that's already consecrated that can be taken by a lay minister to somebody who's unable to come to church. There are some churches that will set aside dozens and dozens of wafers we do not do that. We really keep a very small amount for use between our Sunday services. And there are some churches that have none. In our church, we don't believe that Christ is somehow present in that little safe. So we don't treat it with great reverence as if Christ is there. We believe that Christ is in us and in our fellowship. Um, and so the only reason we reserve sacrament is for home visits. Once we've received the communion, we know that we have in some way been filled with Christ. He is in us. We have taken him in physically, and that in a sense is an outward and visible sign of an inward spiritual grace of, quite, of, inward spiritual grace of Christ dwelling in us. Um, and this is the definition of a sacrament, isn't it? An outward visible sign of an inward invisible grace. And so this is what we believe takes place during the communion, that Christ comes into us more than he was before, that he dwells in us more than he was before, and that we're filled with him more than we were before. And this is why we celebrate it every Sunday, and not just once a month or once a quarter, as in some other churches, because we believe that this is a profound and meaningful way for us to be filled with the presence of Christ. Now, none of what I've said to you in this uh, short message is the one true, correct way. You may have learned something else when you were growing up. You may go to another church down the road and things might be different there. We're just saying that this is the way that we've been doing things at St. Stephen's. And this is how we make sense of our own practice. But essentially what we do believe is that in the Eucharist, in the Holy Communion, something genuine, real, and transformational happens as we participate in the Eucharist, as we consume the bread and the wine, 
and as we receive the infilling of Christ. And so I pray that as you come into your next communion service, perhaps on this coming Sunday, that you will think and be more reflective about what it is that we're doing and about the great privilege it is to receive Christ into our bodies. In the name of God, whose Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.